Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I played a rematch with Princess Chess AI, to whom I lost in the previous match, but this game is much more powerful, and insane than the previous one I played with her, I will share the chess tactics and strategies that will enhance your chess ability, so stay tuned until the end of the video, let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with a defensive move, g3, rather than considering e4 or d4. She copied me because she loves to play the copycat variation, and when I played c4, it became my duty to occupy the center with my d and e pawns, she immediately threw ice on the e5 square, putting pressure on the center, my knight went to c3 to dominate the center along with my bishop, her knight went to e7 to consider d5 in future moves, where castling and f5 could be played, after her knight moved, and both sides castled, princess played very defensively with d6, of course. She could play her bishop to g4 if I ever dared to consider e4, that's part of her plan, along with considering f5, let's see how she approaches it. A few moves later, when she was attacking the d4 pawn, many players might think of playing e3, thinking, hey, I can operation the patient, but after the exchanges, the good thing for white is that I would get the open e file, and the game would continue, where bishop to g4 would be possible. There are no special advantages after playing e3, that's why I decided to play d5, kicking out her knight, when she played knight a5 to attack my pawn, before became possible to kick out the knight, I mean. I could just trap the knight. That's why I played queen d3, threatening to ruin her knight with b4, a few moves later, the knight went back, considering knight to c5, the knight maneuvered like a powerful army defending its country, after a few moves, when her king slid to h8, it became quite evident that she wanted to play f5, where her bishop could support the pawn, or even f4 could be possible, she could push forward her pieces to attack my camp on the mountainside, my king, hiding under the mountain, concealed itself from the enemy. That's why I had to stabilize my structure, and when she played f5, threatening e4 to attack my knight, and two vulnerable pieces, I played e4, that was the only move to protect the position, otherwise, she could defeat even the strongest player, no matter if he's a grandmaster like Magnus, if she dared to capture the pawn on e4, then after the exchanges, bishop to f5 would pin the knight, the knight would be in an awkward position because the battlefield is where all chess blunders and mistakes happen. Returning to the position, princess played f4 because she's not a bad player like those who always blunder in difficult games, also, Queen to e8 was possible, giving the queen a good outpost, the knight could maneuver to a good outpost, as could the bishop on g4, we had some pawn exchanges on the f4 square, where the bishop got an open file for a sniper attack on the mountain lamp, her knight moved back to attack my pawn on the f4 square, and do you know what princess played? She made a powerful sacrifice, try to think a little and use your 69 IQ brain that failed every math exam in school. The powerful move was pawn to g5, it was a sacrifice, and have you thought of sacrificing a piece? LOL, that's not so good, I captured the pawn, and when her knight moved, we had my knight moving back, and then knight to e5, the knights maneuvered like soldiers in a war, jumping like kangaroos, capturing the knight was not a good idea, so the queen moved, the bishop came to g4, attacking the knight with full pressure, and after a couple of moves, you could see that we had some peace exchanges and even more knight exchanges, the bishop moved to the e5 square, creating a problem along the e5 diagonal. Where queen to h4 could also attack the h2 pawn, that's what she wanted, even the rook could arrive on g8, go, my soldier, show your muscles to the enemy, therefore, I played bishop to g4, and princess considered f3 trying to open the bishop's diagonal to attack the pawn like a sniper from under a window, capturing the pawn on f3 would have been a vulnerable move, of course, the bishop was protected by the queen, but that didn't matter, what if black played queen to h4? Checkmate would be unstoppable, and your helpless queen wouldn't be able to protect the pawn on h2, she would be worthless and go home, leaving you. Returning to the reason, we discovered that capturing the pawn was a very bad choice, that's why we had h3 on the board to protect the bishop, the queen moved, 
and queen to e3 happened, followed by some subsequent captures, we then had rook to f4, attacking the bishop, and you could see that your pawn on h3 was pinned, he took a bribe from your enemy to defeat you, even loyalty ends, and your own shadow leaves when darkness appears, at this point, what should you play? Try to think. If you are white and think that king to g1 can protect your position, that's foolish because rook takes g4, and after capturing, queen to h2 leads to checkmate, the game would be over. So, let me share a deep psychological quote about people. Pay no attention to toxic words, what people say is often a reflection of themselves, not you. So, going back to the reason, if you dare to capture the pawn on f3, that's another vulnerable move, because after queen to h3 check, followed by rook to g4 and queen to h2, it would lead to checkmate, the game would again be over, and I would win the money you invested in chess by defeating me. So, going back to the reason, to defend her money that princess chess invested to defeat me and defend her reputation, she tried to attack me with her pawn rook, bishop and queen. A total of 21 points of material attacking, therefore, I had no other choice but to sacrifice my queen on f4, that's the only move I could make in the position. It's not a brilliant move because the queen's sacrifice is forced, not by my choice, that's a sad thing for me, but I assured princess that I would defeat her anyhow, I would use my full strength, full ability, full brain, full IQ, full ELO rating and recharge my battery to 100% to defeat her, you will be finished, princess, after the exchanges on f4, my bishop could go to g3 and pick up her pawn. At this point, I need to break open the structure to promote to a new queen because I feel lonely in my room, after the knight moves and the bishop comes here, the queen goes back, and still, I cannot capture the pawn because there is queen takes h3, therefore, I played a brilliant and masterful move, which is c5, trying to break open the structure, you could also say it's a pawn sacrifice because after the exchanges and after the exchange, I'll show you the alternative variation, remember this, therefore. After bishop to e5 check, which will come to attack the princess, I can spread my wings and show my grace by playing rook to g1, attacking the king with an airy attack, after the king moves, the capture occurs, the knight moves here, and I can even consider e5, connecting the passed pawn, this is a central passed pawn, and as you can see, I can push my pawns forward and completely ruin your position, you will face the mud that I will throw in your face. So, going back to the position, we discovered that capturing the pawn on the c5 square is a very bad choice, that's why we have the knight here, the rook going to the b3 square, and the knight going to the e5 square to put more pressure on the bishop, at this point, I played the bishop here, so you try to lock down the position, and we have some peace dances on the chessboard, and at this point, I played a very brilliant move, can you guess what I considered in this position? After losing the queen, it was a heartbreaking situation for me, but I didn't watch sad songs on YouTube, I became more motivated and considered a brilliant move, try to think for a moment about what that was. The brilliant move is bishop takes d6, sacrificing another bishop, I mean another piece. Go, my best friend, sacrifice yourself for the sake of winning the game, because if you dare to capture the bishop with your knight, thinking you can reduce my trap, after the exchanges, rook to g6 can arrive to attack the queen, the queen goes here, and after rook to g1, where the rook gets the open file, rook to h6 can arrive to attack the king, the queen goes here, and after e5 followed by e6, I can finally play e7, and you can see that my pawn is one step away from becoming a new queen, also. You cannot capture my pawn because rook to g8 can arrive, leading to a checkmate, the game will be over. Eat, chocolate and be happy because you will lose against me anyway. Going back to the reason, I discovered that knight takes bishop is not possible, therefore, after c takes d6 happened in the game, I played the rook to the g6 square, taking out the rook because rook to g1 followed by rook to h6 can arrive, as I illustrated recently, a few moves later, 
you can see that my pawn is going to be promoted with the support of the bishop, the bishop is the best supporter for the pawn, just as a teacher is the best supporter for a student to become bright, therefore, after a couple of moves, the pawn is one step away from becoming a new queen, at this point, she wasn't afraid of capturing the rook, because after I promoted to a new queen, getting my new queen. I became very happy that I could now fully enjoy playing chess, at this point, many chess players might consider capturing the queen, but that's a very bad choice because after the exchange, queen captures, bishop captures, you can see that I have an extra pawn, and these two central pawns are well protected by the light square bishop, this position will give me some advantages. Alright, so going back to the position, she didn't capture the bishop. She played the queen here, and after the queen moved, we had some sequences of pieces dancing on the board, we had some knight and queen dances at the party, under the lights at the party house, at this point, many players might think that the b5 and d6 pawns are under attack, so why not just capture them. But capturing the pawn is a very bad choice because after knight takes f2, the king moves, and queen to f4 check arrives, your king would be diminished, even the rook bodyguard couldn't protect it because he would be captured. So, going back to the position, the pawn cannot be captured, therefore, we have queen to b7 and b6, I need to protect the f2 pawn and stay along this diagonal, we are just maneuvering the pieces, or you can call it piece development, we have some rook checks and the rook going to the h5 square, threatening queen to h6, which can lead to a checkmate, therefore, after a few more moves, we were just exchanging checks, and queen to h7 followed by queen to d7 happened in the game. I captured the pawn and finally considered e5, connecting the past pawns, as you can see, and this was my full race, which you saw in the game, the knight is under attack by the pieces, and I can also play queen to g7, that's a vulnerability, and I won a knight. When the queen moved, I threatened queen to h4, which could lead to a deadlock situation for you, after a queen check and capturing the rook, the position would be over for you, I would pick up the queen and checkmate the princess. My revenge would be complete, I'm very happy to have defeated princess because nobody can defeat me, that's the ultimate truth, and princess, you need to prepare more and get coaching from me to defeat me, so, I hope you enjoyed the game very much, if so then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best bye bye take care and see you soon.